what? Look at these views. Views for days. It's also very, very busy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this very special. Doesn't happen very often, but today Wait, it's mate, happening. Did you not flush the toilet? You just left a big dump in the toilet. Might. What are you doing? Might, might not have flushed. Might third not. time. Third time. I'm sick of it. Might not flush the toilet. Anyway, welcome to this very special vlog. They don't happen very often, but when they do, wow, they are average at best. But here we are in the Alps. Hopefully this scenery will make it a little bit better. So remember a few weeks or a few months ago, probably now, that um, I posted a video all about completing your first 100K. I literally did it with no training. I'd, I'd not trained for a long time. I just went out and rode 100K, one, to see how it felt, and two, to try and give some tips and advice on what you need to do if you're going to do it. Well, today, I'm riding 100 miles. Second time in my life that I'm going to be riding 100 miles. Nervous? Bloody hell, am I ever. But because you get lots of value for money here on the Chris Pritchard Cycling New Show, I'm going to give you a tip right now, less than a minute into this vlog. If you're going to attempt a 100 mile bike ride for the first time, don't do it in the Alps. It's probably the worst place. I mean, we're starting here. We're in Chamonix. It's about a thousand meters above sea level, something like that. So we're already at altitude. And Cameron has decided that we're going to tackle a 25 mile climb. So the idea behind this video for Cameron is we're trying to visit three countries in one day. We're starting in France. We're heading to Switzerland. Then we're going to head into Italy, spin round and come back round. But to do that, it means we have to go up that 25 mile climb. The only saving grace is that, well, 25 mile of descent, isn't it? Cam, are you ready? Uh, uh, just about, mate. Tides pumped up, food's in the bag, got some sweets for you, just in case you crack. Oh, I'm gonna crack big time. At what point do you think I'll crack, though? <coughs> Whenever the battery runs out on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm taking the um, the Ribble. What's it called, Cam? A DSLR 789 e-bike, five? Endurance, Endurance SLE. Endurance SLE. So this, so this is the Endurance SL, which is like the standard one. All right, it's not an advert. No, no, but that's basically the same bike, but with a motor in. All right, so I'm going to be using this. So this right here is going to be my savior and my friend, as long as it doesn't run out. So that is the top of climb number one. We're about 1,500 meters right now. That's climb number one of about five done for today. any epic montages of cycling you're at the wrong channel this is the view you're going to be seeing all day i mean it's a fine ass so i can't complain but <laughs> i'm uh, yeah tip number two on a hundred mile ride find someone as strong as an ox who's really good on a bike and just sit on the wheel so we're just headed into switzerland straight through border control didn't even check for EPO so when we get to the top of the mountain in Italy fresh blood bag better EPO and we're good to go Made it to the top of climb number two again we're about 1500 meters in the air and this view is insane look at that how you feeling mate so far yeah yeah i'm still riding a little bit conservative <laughs> i'm really terrified of this next climb <laughs> terrified you know this climb that we're about to go up yeah that is considered one ride for me
far off tracking now. We've got about what, 23k to the top? If it stays like this, we're all right, I think. All right, so Cam, how far have we gone? Uh, we've done about 70, just over 70k now. So just over 70k and the batteries start to die on this bike. There's another 10k to go to the top of this climb before we reach Italy. And the way I feel, don't think I'm going to make it so what we're going to do is Cam's going to carry on smash it spin round and then catch me up on the way back down we've got a long descent here and then I've got two big climbs to get back over so hopefully yeah. this boy is going to catch I'm me I'm going to do it for us both but the thing is like the battery might not be down we just don't know I mean it's, it's dropped to amber which is like 50% I think so it might last but like I think it's too much of a risk so the second to last climb that I've got to get over is like this and I need battery power for it if I've got no battery power I ain't getting up here so Cam, enjoy. So this is the climb I've been dreading. The penultimate climb. I didn't realize it was as long as this. 12K. My power light's still on amber. And I had to use, coming off that big long descent, I had to use a lot of power because I was just riding straight back into a headwind. Go on, boy. Man, I wish I was doing that right now. Anyway, if I was, I'd be going the wrong way, making it harder for myself. It's only 10K, that's nothing. And if my battery stays here, this speed, I might be all right. If, if it stays here. All right, so it wasn't quite, three countries in one day but two and three quarters ain't too bad for a for a fat slow dad really just so blessed that someone invented e-bikes and uh, here we are on the swiss french border let's see if i get through because i don't have my passport cameron's got it let's see try and look inconspicuous i'm in i'm in they can't stop me now. They can't stop me now. Well, they can. Because I'm not going to be hard to catch. Final climb of the day. This one's the shortest as well. There we go. Bonjour. Bienvenue. Some right, it's time to initiate the final 2% of battery power. Because I... I'm smoked. Bump, bump. Ah, oh. oh. Mr. Tesla, thank you for inventing Ilecki. Was it him? Is it Tesla that invented electricity? Probably.
and just like that, I'm back here in the UK and it's two weeks later. Um, I was waiting for Cameron to drop his video before I dropped this one because I might get a few more views off of the back of, <laughs> off the back of his. Plus, I didn't want to spoil his because his was a, his was a way better video than mine. Um, two, three, three takeaways from this one. One, don't try and ride your first 100 miles or your second 100 miles in like 10 years in the Alps. Two, do not listen to Cameron Jeffers when it comes to sun protection. Just wear sun protection. Don't second guess the weather. Don't go with what the weather forecast says on the internet because it was supposed to be no higher than 23 degrees, cloudy, overcast, pretty, pretty much a standard UK day. It wasn't. It was anything but. It was 34 degrees. The sun shone all day and I got burnt to an absolute crisp. It wasn't clever. It wasn't fun. It was funny for Cam. It wasn't funny for me and I'm still peeling to this day. So don't ever leave the house without sun cream when you're going on a ride, especially a six hour ride. Um, and, and, number, and number three, if you are going to do 100 kilometers, pick an e-bike and make sure you charge it up. Uh, the problem, one of the issues we had, um, I don't think the, the charge of the battery was the issue. I think it was the, the end users, mainly Cam, who didn't charge the battery up uh, enough. So we got to this car park, um, like you saw at the start of the video, and there was no electricity. Cameron assured me, that on the internet it said there was electricity. There was no electricity, so we ended up using the generator, which meant we could only put it on for a couple of hours in the evening, a couple of hours in the morning. Subsequently, insufficient uh, charging of the bike led to uh, an early bath for Pritchard. I think I would have made it as well, because I'd left it on like the 50% setting, and I think, I think I would have made it to the top of that other climb, back down and then, and then home again. So I'm slightly gutted that I didn't actually achieve it, but still, 88 miles, 142 kilometers, for me, is pretty bloody good and I didn't use the the motor all the time I only used it on the climbs so I use it on the first one use it a little bit on the second one but then the big one I used it on but then on the way back because it had started to uh, to die a little bit that second to last climb just uh, just over 12 kilometers 7.9 average gradient it was brutal like at the bottom of it you can see it just zigzag up the hill oh man so, but I, but I knew I needed some saving for potentially the last two or three K of that climb and then the last climb. So I managed to take a big chunk of seven kilometers out of that climb, not using the motor, but obviously without using the motor, you've got an additional weight of the battery, additional weight of the motor on the bike, as well as the additional weight that I'm carrying as well. So it's, it's great having an electric bike when the battery's working and you can just flick it on and off you go. If you're on a descent, don't even need the battery. On the flat, if you're riding with someone like Cameron, you probably need the battery a little bit, but essentially you only need that battery when, you, when you're going uphill, especially someone like me. So when that battery goes, you've got zero assistance and all of a sudden now you've got a weight penalty that you have to overcome as well. So yeah, all good and well as long as your, your, your bike's charged up and and getting you up the hills, but without it, woo wee. And you know what, after riding that e-bike for a few days, I would absolutely love one. I would not feel like I was cheating. I would not feel like I was not a real cyclist. They're just so bloody good. You don't need to use the battery all the time. You can use it as and when you need it, but what it allows you to do is go even further. So just getting a bike in the first place, allows you to go a lot further than you would if you were running or you were walking. So you get to explore more. But now I can explore double the amount without the need to spend six or seven hours on a bike training to be able to get to that point where I can do that, if that makes sense. So if I wanted to go out and do a 100 mile ride now on an e-bike, I wouldn't even think twice about it. I wouldn't think, oh, that's a long way. I might not be able to get through that. I'd think, let's go and do it. Like I would like a, a 50 mile ride on a normal bike. If I was like, right, weather's nice, I'm going out for a 50 mile ride, wouldn't even think twice about it. I know I can get through that as long as I don't just blow my front doors off or back doors within minutes of, of going out the door. And it's the same with, with an e-bike now. If I go, oh, I'm gonna go and do 100 miles, I wouldn't even think twice about it. I'd pack a bit of food and go. They're the future, I'm telling you, they are the future, especially for people like me. Thanks for watching everybody. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not watched Cameron Jeffers' video already, which I presume you will have because you probably came here from that, 
then uh, head over to his channel and give that video a like and, and watch his point of view of actually achieving three countries in one ride. And um, I guess I'll be, uh, I'll be back again soon with another video. Cheers, love.